Nice, Snipes. Thank you very much for that one, Snipes. I'll take that as confirmation that everything is good. <laughs> no news, no news, good news. No news is good news most of the time, which is great. <laughs> this man is the most. <laughs> right, we've got music in the background. Please do tell me, Stos, if it gets a bit distracting, I'll happily pause it or mute it for us. It's all good for now. But with that said, hello, Istos. How are you doing? Hello, I'm <laughs> fine. I'm a bit uh, nervous to be live with you, but uh, I think it's going to be a great experience. Fine. That is absolutely fine. It's absolutely normal. I do feel the nerves myself before every single one of these episodes. Do you know what? Even if I press go live for a regular gameplay, I do have the nerves and it takes about five to ten minutes for it to go away. But I will do a bit of talking so we can settle us in and then we can ask you some questions to get to know you better. And then we can segue into more interesting things about the game and things that everyone is here to see today. Cool. Perfect. So you guys are all familiar with the traditional format of the podcast. We have a guest that we need to make blush. We ask questions. We get to know them. We get the best out of them. You guys contribute in the chat with your questions and things like that. But today we are going to have a big departure, the biggest one yet from that traditional format. Today's conversation will be a relaxed one. It's identical um, in vibe to the one we had on Monday night, if you remember Istos. Just a chill conversation, yeah. two of us having a, a chat. And we also have chat which can ask questions and we can interact with that if you so fancy it, of course. We will try and keep the conversation within the two hours, just to show some respect for Istos time. If he's having a blast and he's loving the conversation, we can keep, keep, keep going for longer. But we've certainly prepared more questions, more uh, content that we need to cover than the two hours allowed, just in case we, everybody's having a blast and we need to push a bit further. Are you happy with Perfect. that? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, yeah, well, I'd love to put, put it to you now so we can get to know you a bit. Um, would you be able to tell us who you are? Who is Istos? What is your um, uh, the uh, image that you have on your uh, Discord? Can you tell us everything about you? I'm curious about everything from your logo, your persona online, the person in real life, everything that you want to give us in your own words. All right, so uh, I can give a bit of background uh, for the person that I am in real life. I moved, uh, I was born in Canada, in Quebec, and I moved to to France a couple of years back. Uh, my girlfriend is from here, so we decided to, to settle for a couple of years in France. Nice. And uh, the same time I was moving in, in, to France, uh, I, I thought, well, maybe I can get back into Dofus. Uh, I always dangerous thought when thought. I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought... <laughs> but, um, yes, so I played it uh, on and off when I was younger, but never really seriously. And then when I moved here, uh, let's say two years back, I uh, started playing with the objective of kind of completing the game. Ooh. Uh, so ambitious. I'm still I'm still on my way there. Uh, yeah, I'm at 16k uh, <laughs> achievements. Score oh, remarkable, so remarkable. Um, that is great. But uh, yeah, there, there's still a lot to do. But I'm, I've been having a blast interacting with the community. I'm part of a very nice guild. Um, I've actually met some of the, the my guild me members uh, in real life uh, a couple of times. So that wow. was very nice experience. It was a way for me to meet people uh, now that I've moved here. So uh, yeah, as far as the my name and the image, uh, Istos is uh, the name of a character in a French uh, web series. Um, that's called Noob. Oh wow! And it's like uh, the characters are characters in a MMO, and you follow their adventures and also their real life uh, personas. I think there is one that is similar in English, but I don't know. I don't know the name. Okay, okay. And uh, Istos was the, this uh, super good healer in, the, in this MMO. And ah. I thought the, the character was stylish. So I, I <laughs> kind of uh, picked the pronunciation and uh, reworked the <laughs> spelling so to make it my own. 
Ah, oh, that's brilliant. So do we take that to mean you play, you main an Aneripsa? Nah, no. I just have <laughs> the character to be relatable. And he's always like uh, calm and trying to help you, everyone else. So that I like that brilliant. about him. Yes. Uh, yeah, fantastic. And, uh, the, uh, the picture is, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Oh, yes. And uh, I name all my characters in game uh, with names from this uh, universe. That's great. And uh, my main character is called Fire Lord Ozai. So oh. I, I picked a Fire <laughs> Nation profile picture that I thought <laughs> maybe looked a bit like me. So, <laughs> yes, uh, with the hair as well. Yeah. Yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah. Good attention to detail right there. Definitely can see it now. Um, I, I know that you've teased, you've, you've mentioned that you are from Canada. And I did definitely pick up on our first conversation. Not, not even our first conversation. When I saw you at the Japan Expo asking a question, I thought this is either some sort of southern um, accent that I'm not familiar with. Oh, this is Quebec, Canada. And it turns out it was, it was Quebec. And this is the question that I ask everyone pretty much that I have on for a conversation is... How did you find out about the game being so far away from France? How did how did you come across it? So I think I don't know for sure, but I think there's a good uh, player base that is in Quebec because um, it's a French community, right? It's a French speaking community. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's more accessible. You can play with the other like uh, the big the biggest servers are. French speaking servers yeah. and uh, the game was made in French with all the wor uh, play on words with the items and stuff like that. I know that in English <laughs> there all, are also a lot of uh, wordplay that is kept, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I met I, uh, someone that I met in school when I was like maybe 12 years old, told me, oh, you should try this game. And he was explaining it to me and I didn't understand. But when I tried it, I was like, oh, wow, that, that is good. Yeah. And, uh, the rest yeah, is history. I, I You've just come back from a subscribed. Japan Expo. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. The uh -huh. first thing I know that, that fell and um, <laughs> resulted in me being here. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that you can never picture. If you were to come back in time and speak to your younger self, 12 years old, and be like, do you know this game that you're playing right now? One day you will meet the guys who are making it and you'll have conversations with them and you'll be filmed and you'll have conversations after that about that conversation you've had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But I'll yeah, I've about. always liked the kind of a bit grinding, achievement uh, chasing that, that mm -hmm. is presented in every MMO, I'd say. Yeah. The free market economy, all of these stuff. I, I think it's very uh, immersive and fun. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm always bored by the combat in other MMOs. It's always like you spam your buttons and cool down and kind of... I don't really... I don't really keep playing it. I'm getting bored too fast. But Dofus with the tactical combat, that hooked me really much. Yeah, it's remarkable. We have, uh, this is one thing I quite like about uh, asking this question in particular, is there's almost always someone in chat who will tell us the most peculiar story about how they found out the game. And I think we have someone who's dropping in for the first time that is saying, um, most South American players are around my age, so 28, which is quite... Uh, aligned with our current age my aver average viewership on youtube for example is yeah. uh, 25 to 35 years of age we're no longer the 12 year old kids that we were farming gobbles all day and cracklers yeah, <laughs> uh, this also, i found out about dofus from back when it was associated to level up games i'm not entirely sure what level up games it sounds like uh, some sort of franchise or which is why it's quite hard to find new players from this community most who are new are in fact returning players. Yes. Yeah. And I'll just go, gonna do a quick parenthesis about that. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've heard from uh, the Enkama staff at the Japan, they're very much aware of that. They have stats that that show, like, pretty much they pretty much saturated the market in France, and uh, 
of course there uh, there could be a, a more acquisition in the international community but of course all of the uh, first all of the beta the the, the new stuff that's coming mm. is made with uh the existing player base in mind mm -hmm. so they're not trying to reach to do unity just to reach a broader audience they're trying Better. to improve the game for the players that are currently playing they want to make it better for the actual people that play it right now. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. In a second phase, they'll try to get some marketing going and try to broaden the audience, yeah. Fair enough. That's remarkable. It is uh, quite in line with everything that they've been saying over the last few months whenever we've posed the question to them. Uh, are you going yeah. to advertise or are you going to try and bring in new players? It's always been the same nope we want to make you guys happy and assure i'm using this term particularly because it expresses what they're trying to do they want to assure a a successful transition going from flash yeah. to unity is such a big jump that they need to do it right so that the people who are playing continue to play and are more happy yes there are a lot of people who are just waiting for the news to drop so they can come and join so there there is likely to be a big influx of players and then perhaps as a third phase maybe start opening the doors up wide and try and get people through it yeah exactly mm, that's awesome um i wanted to ask you something a bit to the side because we have a background image here and if you're me you all you know about it is from second hand what you've told me what i've seen in the lives what yeah. can you tell us about this thing right here? What is it for those of us who don't know what a Japan Expo is? So this <laughs> was my first time at the Japan Expo. Um, it was very, I was very curious to discover everything there that was there. So except from the stuff that you've obviously seen from the lives and from stuff that is Ankama related. Yeah. There were a lot of, uh, a lot of people first, first off, it's in like, big hangars um there was like three sections of the like the main hall and then two other side side halls and then uh it was all open space mm -hmm. and uh there were sections like there was this, a big section about cosplay so you mm -hmm. you would have uh, like places where you can go to repair your cosplay scenes yeah. where there will be cosplay shows and competitions wow uh, there was one section about music where you, you get music shows martial <laughs> arts uh, demonstrations Ooh. there was a like uh movie projection place that uh, they uh, showcased in uh man sorry i'm looking for my words uh like a preview of something that is okay. upcoming like are they are they sort of showcasing upcoming games and movies and productions generally? I think there was there was like a how do you say avant premiere? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A uh, preview? A what would you call that? I'm not. I, I've lost the word itself. Okay. It's, uh, well, yeah, it's like the like first they, they shows showing, of movies. Uh, they mm. were sh showing an episode of a, of an anime that wasn't released yet so if you were at the japan expo you could see it uh, before everyone else uh -huh. um and yeah mm -hmm, a lot yeah. of artists also were there yeah. the doing uh like selling paintings selling i see a bunch of different stuff that they that they made that was yeah. kind of related to the ja japanese culture okay and yeah, then I yeah, think... obviously a big uh, gaming section um a lot of manga stores that were there. Can, can, you, can, you, can you please tell us, first of all, that it is not in Japan, although there is Japan in the name. You did not go to all the way. Yeah, it was in Paris, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. That was a running joke, and I've played to it a lot, because obviously I do look up these things because I want to go to them and stuff like that. And I was very well aware that it was in Paris, France. But someone yes, said, the Japan Expo, are you going to go all the way to Japan? I was like, yes, I'm going to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people kept repeating it as if it were actually in Japan. I had to correct that because it was getting out of hand. Like, why are they going all the way to Japan to showcase their game? No, it's yeah, so a sort of cultural event that celebrates the Japanese culture, gaming in general. And yes, as we know, exactly. Dofus is heavily inspired 
from Japanese culture. Yes. Like um spell capture is Pokemon and you know, you know all the references from playing and interacting with the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even mm. the, the art for the their other media are mm. a bit inspired by anime and mangas yeah. and stuff like that. There was a long running Dofus manga that ended this year. What was it called? Um, just Dofus. Uh Okay. Mm. It, that ended. It, I'm not super sure of the, of the whole story. I read like the first few uh, few books, but uh, it's like a faker that meets Gultar and then goes on nice. an adventure with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did recently watch the what is it called? The Dofus, the uh, book, the le, le livre de Juliet, the book of Juliet. And for the first time, I know it's old. It's been out for some time. But it was a shift, a drastic shift in the way I consume the game now. I feel like I know it better, yes. more intimately, and it's just it's more enjoyable. To, it's fun to see like the, the actual Dofuses in action and see the the characters. You can see Joris when he's little, and then yes. in Dofus <laughs> you when you meet him, he's, he's very old. Yeah. Uh, and and Caribim as well. And the other yes. characters that you, you meet Apicha. and you're like, oh, that's yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah, um, I, I know we haven't mentioned this, but um, from having spoken to you, I knew th I know that you are a developer. You're not just yes. a gamer. You know a lot about the other side of the game. And wh what can you tell us about that experience meeting the team as a developer? Did that give you any sort of insights that our, us mere mortals wouldn't have gleaned from that conversation? <laughs> I, I wouldn't think that, but... I've talked with some devs and, and asked them a bit more que technical question, but that was mostly for my curiosity. Um, I don't really think uh, I gained the valuable insight of how the game is going to go uh, uh, just future, from being a, a developer. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, for sure, I understand like the, the, the processes that go into making a game and Maybe I'm a bit more understanding on some of the limitations or some of the delays. <laughs> they got you. They got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has I'm happened like... to me during uh, the, la the last podcast. I've prepared as much as I could humanly do. And we still had some tech issues for some bizarre reason. I was in Morocco. The internet wasn't great. And there was a lot of hiccups, which meant we started the most important, arguably one of the most important conversations I've had so far started at 15 minutes late which is unheard of and from that moment on i was like i'm sympathetic when you do a big live and we have to wait <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i get that but i know chat hasn't asked this question but you will see that something has popped up here this is a website yes. and this website lets me customize would you like to tell us about what i what am i doing what do i have access to here so yeah, basically, uh, I wanted to suggest a new logo for my guild or for my alliance, and then I couldn't do it. I couldn't preview like what were the options, and I thought, oh, for sure, there's gonna be a tool to do that, but there wasn't one. So I, I made it. Uh, I made a quick one just using the the data from the the game and putting it uh, on GitHub and. Yeah, I don't know if it's up to date, and there are many more new logos now. But yeah, uh, you can. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It would be easy for me to to add them and. Uh, nice. That, yeah. That's, so this that's is your developer cool to side. Be able to... Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you so happy you for me to, to share the link? Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's. I put the link down no, on uh, the chat. The only thing that we can crash is the uh, Ankama's API, so it's pretty safe. <laughs> only. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you guys still want to log in later on after this conversation, do not crash this API, please. <laughs> that is remarkable. So you thought there was a big need for something to preview without having to go yourself to the temple, consume a stone, yeah, exactly. and then get to try it. So you've made this tool like this. Um, I suppose we're getting into the meaty parts now, but why, why not? Um, you have this developer side to you, but you also play the game and interact with it. What sorts of tools would you say are missing at the moment? If you had unlimited budget and time, what would you start working on now? 
And let me just take a look at the, the chat. Yeah, exactly. The, there was the this was the mm. only way to do it. Uh, spending a, a gem, and it, it feels kind of a bad experience to have to do that. Yes. Um, so using the website, it, it's it gets easier. It's nice. Um, so. Can you repeat the question? Yes, uh, you are very tool minded. You can make your own tools if you see oh, the yeah. need for them. You play the game at such a high level. You're at 16K, so nobody needs to explain to you that there are mechanics, theory, crafting. You're deep into the game now already. So the marriage and combination of these two facets of yours must make it so that you are constantly spotting holes and needs everywhere you go while you're engaging with the game in experience so to speak what sorts of things would you say are definitely lacking right now that you'd work on if you had unlimited money and time what would be the top priority what tool is missing i don't know uh, i think it, we have a pretty good uh, arsenal of tools especially since i'm a french native i can use all the french only uh, tools which is mm -hmm. not really available for the english community yes um For my side, I think the biggest, uh, the things that annoy me the most while playing the game is uh, the game itself being a bit laggy and being <laughs> uh, all of the things that will be uh, improved in, in Unity and some some other things that will still be there, of course. Uh, Fair enough. Um, that make the game a bit harder to, it, it's, a, it's hard to find the right balance. Because mm -hmm. I enjoy really much the super complex mechanics and trying a fight again and again and and trying to theory craft a specific gear to pass this uh, hard combat. Yeah. But yeah, at yeah. the same time, that makes it very hard for new players to to go in blind. Nice. Right. Nice. So that it's hard for me. I I want uh to keep having complex challenges thrown at me. But sometimes uh, the visibility could be better, the fluidity could be better. Yes. Yeah, show uh, multi account management. But even then, I I think if I had to start over again right now, I would play on the solo account uh, mm -hmm. uh, server. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this uh, helps the community to play together. Okay. Um, because you you're kind of forced to have some friends over to do this dungeon instead of just doing everything rushing the twenty yeah. k achievements all on your own. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention, but I'm also conscious of time, so I'll try and do them quickly so we can get to the unity part, which is the most exciting bit. That I imagine the chat is waiting for. Uh, yes. The first thing is. Um, I've had a conversation with Manai and Papino in English for the first time they've done anything like that. And during that conversation, Manai sort of made an, a back of the envelope promise that she would be uh, putting more effort into ensuring some sort of communication, albeit minimal, during all sorts of upcoming events. And this was your first time interacting with people there. Did you see, we've had a, a different experience from the one you've had being there, but what have you noticed? Were people speaking in English? Were people sort of French and then it was a bit of a chore? What can you tell us? What were your observations on that level? Uh, it's obviously like most of the people there were French people because it's in Paris, right? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> no surprise. the Japan Expo is much bigger than just Ankama, right? So yeah, a lot of people that didn't really come for Dofus, but they're like, oh, Dofus, I played that when I was young. Let, let me go check what's check that about. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so a lot of the, like, Riebeck was explaining the game in French every every time. There was, I didn't see, like, I wasn't there all, all the time, but I haven't seen, like, him explain English to some people. Mm -hmm. I know that Manaya did a couple of lives in English. Yeah. I saw her talk in English with other people. Uh, I think I heard her uh, speak Portuguese as well with, with some some other person. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't recognize it, so <laughs> I'm guessing Fair Portuguese. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. PTBR. Um, yeah. 
If and there is a language that exists, she speaks it. This is my attitude. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was very impressed. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, at one point, uh, this is a, more of a funny anecdote, but I was talking to Manaya and someone came to say like, hey, Manaya, you're needed at this place. Mm -hmm. And so we, the conversation was interrupted and the, the, the other person, I was speaking in French with Manaya, but the other person said, oh, sorry. <laughs> in English, to be, I, I assume that since I was talking to Manaya, yeah, it was because <laughs> I was be an, an English speaker. Yeah, exactly. So I think uh, Manaya did a good job. She was always filming stuff, interviewing people. But of course, it's mostly French people there. But yes. Um, speaking of that in particular, I wanted to. I wanted us to take a very quick moment, and I wanted to showcase my appreciation for a number of people. I've watched and documented the whole Ankama uh, Japan Expo thing that has happened from day one to the last day. And then I've also covered the uh, one that we've had yesterday where they've showcased the game to those of us who have missed it. And I've noticed a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. And I will put this up here. So I've got multiple videos right here, multiple sections and segments from previous lives that they've done and I'm gonna pause the music here so I can hear myself better so the first thing I have noticed and I want to shout out uh, Manaya for this massively which is she did promise that she would put more effort into not only covering her part or giving us summaries in English as a back thought at the end of the day but also getting the team itself who are not very comfortable speaking in English to get out of their comfort zone and just have a word with the international community so we can put names, faces to the names. Because we we hear the word Rebek, we see him in the lives. But unless he speaks to you directly in the language that you understand, you don't really form any sort of connection and you don't associate the name and the face with the person and sort of build a knowledge of the team. So the first person I want to say thank you for is Manaya. She has done a fantastic job. She has done multiple recaps at the end of the day. She has had conversations with everyone. And I want to show you here. Um, this is middle. Speaking in English. This is Sue. Speaking in English, she got the entire team at one point or another to speak to us directly, pick up questions, and they've even done some codes giveaways in English, which was remarkable. I found that to be the cherry on top, to have a little moment where they've given a specific segment of their viewer base codes to get them engaged and have an advantage over all the French people entering codes as fast as the lightning. <laughs> the second person is, of course, Istos. You can see that he has had conversations with the team. He has asked them questions and everything, but it was always done in French because as we have learned nowadays is that he is a native French speaker. So it's natural to him to speak with them. But and he will tell us more in more detail about this anecdote. He has gone out of his way to speak with the team in English and tried to put some spotlight, have some minutes recorded in English to add to the plethora, to the portfolio that they were building of content they've created in English during this four day event. So thank you very much for that, Istos. The second, the third one, uh, is this you asking the question? But <laughs> I can't remember exactly where I, I had one job. <laughs> yeah, had one job to show you asking the question, but I think I've completely you'll, you'll find it. it. Is it at minute five from memory? I yes, don't I know from memory because yeah, uh, there wasn't a timer. There it is. There he is. <laughs> this is Istos oh, yeah. asking his question to the team in French. We can go over that again. But the third person is someone that is no stranger to the international pub and nowadays to the international community as a whole since we've managed to rope him in and have him join our cult, so to speak. And this person is Hugo Laz. He's a French content creator who, and I kid you not, has done an hour-long conversation about his experience of the Japan Expo, similar to what we're doing today with Istos, but he was there instead of going to play, try new things, buy new mangas, do things like that. He has taken the time alongside Angom8, who is very active on Twitter. They both took the time 
to sit down and speak, well, stay up, as you can obviously, <laughs> for over an hour with Manaya purely in English. And this was the, the best moment for me, is seeing a player talk about Unity, someone who has geeked it out so much, who plays Iron Man, who plays big teams, give us some sort of immediate returns that doesn't come from the team. Because obviously, as we know, if you're making, producing something, it's not the same as a player that knows nothing about the backside of it, getting their hands on it and giving us their first hand experience and feedback. And of course, the fourth and last one is Ongom, who is French, creates content in French. He writes, he has a, what is it called again? Do you know the name of um, his magazine, uh, Istos? Um, Angom? Yeah, this guy right here. I I don't know. I I should have uh, I should have added that onto the mix, but he does have he has a uh, blog post like a website where he puts all information about the game guides and stuff like that. This is how he creates content. It's not the traditional webcam. I'm playing and speaking. He does writing. And he also surprised me. He could have done this in French and then moved on with his life, perhaps even gotten more or done it in half of the time. But he took the time to speak with Manaya for over an hour and give us all sorts of detail. Because uh, if you speak to a journalist about something that has happened, they'll give you a different outlook. His point of view is different from that of Hugo Laz, who is a traditional grinder player streamer. So the marriage of those two guys telling us about their experience just pleased me so much that I thought I definitely need to pose for a minute and give them a big old shout out for that. So Manaya made the entire team speak in English, love that. Istos is here speaking with us in English and he will tell us about his anecdote later on and these two fantastic beautiful chaps. And that's it for this shout out bit. <laughs> I shall remove them from the screen and we can neatly segue into the meat of this conversation. Uh, how are you finding it so far, Istos? Uh, you still get the, are the nerves gone? Are we having a good time so yeah, far? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm much more comfortable. <laughs> it's it's amazing how that happens. All it takes is about five to seven minutes, and then you're like, why was I why was I worried? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not my first time being nervous for nothing, but uh, I'm I'm used to it. Yes, that's remarkable. I, I wanted to segue into Unity, your experience at the Japan Expo, with a little anecdote. Uh, and I'm just going to give you the headlines. We've all seen Istos ask questions uh, the first day towards Ribeck and Papino. He asked them a question. I haven't told you what the question is, but he will tell us more about it. What I can tell you is on the back of that question, for the next four days, every time the team spotted Istos, they would call him Mr. Reward. <laughs> what is the what is the story there? <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, specifically Rebe that called me uh, the Mister Reward, but uh, because he was there when I asked the question. So yeah, the first day uh, I was with uh, other people at the Japan Expo, so I only went to this uh, this conference and asked mm -hmm. my question because I want to play the beta, I'm very curious. I will play the beta even <laughs> even if there are no rewards. Mm -hmm. uh, but it feels like if I invest like three months to do every everything on the beta and try to, to do the server rush and stuff like that, then mm -hmm. it will feel bad to go back to my original character and not having ah. progress for three months, right? Yeah, so I was enough. asking about is there a plan to give rewards for, for people? Maybe like a, something like Tamperis, right? Where you get a XP potion at the end. You yeah, could grind, yeah. try to get to level 200. And then when the beta is closed, at least you have a level 200 potion where, that you can use to mm. get a new, try a new class at level 200 or something like that. Yeah. So to uh, compensate but... the time you have spent outside of your server and give you something to speed up your progression when you return to it. So it's not yeah, wasted exactly. time. Yeah, so that, that exactly. was the idea behind your question, right? Yeah, I feel, feel like mm -hmm. I, I still progressed a bit. Like my, my account is a bit richer from this, all this time that I invested it. And mm -hmm. so the answer was not that uh, <laughs> satisfying to my taste. It was satisfying, but... <laughs> Uh, they said they won't have uh, that, that many rewards and it, it'll be like uh, 
some small things to, to say thank you much more than uh, this uh, battle pass that you need to check all the objectives. Mm. Um, and it's fine. It's a format different that I had envisioned as well with the different resets and different phases to the beta. Nice. So uh, it's good. But yeah, every year back then, the second day when I came to claim my Locust Shield, uh, he said, hey, I know, don't I know you? <laughs> You're the guy asking for rewards. And then he was teasing me about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As but, you were coming uh, yeah. to claim a reward. <laughs> exactly. I was there to claim my reward and he said, there's a reward for you, my guy. Uh, but then yeah. afterwards, he, he took the time to say, like, I'm just teasing you. I really appreciate the... Uh, your energy and you coming to, to chat with me. Uh, he even even did a, a shout out to me in one of the live streams. Uh, so that was very, uh, that very remarkable. kind of him. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, something that most people have missed about who didn't follow as much as I did is this was Rebeck's first Japan Expo. He's been working for the company for some years and he's never had yes. this direct experience with the community the players the influencers the streamers so for him it was surreal he did take a moment towards the end to give us a little summary of how he felt he was speaking with manai in english and he it was yes. just told that it was surreal he appreciated it so don't think that the teasing was done in bad faith he was so ecstatic yeah, and happy exactly. that something happened involving him and he recognized you and he was in the heat of the moment loving it and this is my appreciation yeah. of it, at least from hearing him speak and everything that you've said today as well. One thing that he told me is that it was such a breath of fresh air to be there in person because yes. usually the feedback that he gets from the community is the forum, Twitter, and mm. we kind of all know how that is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you have positive <laughs> things to say, you don't say them. And if you have yep. complaining yep. to do, then... Uh, Right. And there's there's a distance, right? Yeah. There's a distance created by being online and you can just say hateful things. And so yeah. he felt that he could feel the difference. Like the the majority is silent, but they're enjoying what they do, right? And of course. They they kind of vote by playing, they tell them that by keeping keep playing the game. Uh but to have people come and say it to his face, hey, good job, I'm having such fun and asking questions about about things while still giving positive feedback, giving uh, actionable items instead of just, this sucks. So he was very happy about that. And he had such energy, like all day he was just going back and forth explaining the same thing. Do you guys know what AP and MP are? Is this your first time playing the game? I've heard him say that like tens of time and I was in the, even there the whole time. So yeah. <laughs> That's remarkable. He did complain a bit about it towards the end saying he had to... Uh, he did mention that during the last live where they showcased the fight. He said he had to explain the fights so many times that he was able to summarize it under one minute. The repetition of it. <laughs> Super, exactly. Superbly efficient, yeah. So you have told us about one conversation you've had with Rebek, but I imagine you had so many more than just that one in particular. What, what others marked you and stayed with you until today that you want to tell us about? So for Rebek specifically, he was very busy because uh, there was always like a, a queue of people wanting to try Dovis or wanting to beat their own score. So I didn't have that much time to just uh, have a in-depth conversation. Mm. I asked him a couple of questions that I had from my guild members, but it was like a question of five minutes here and there. Where, while I was in the queue, he, when he got to explaining the game to me, I, I took that one minute that he would give the explanation and ask him a question instead. Yeah. So I didn't get that that uh, the I didn't get the chance to get a big conversation with him, nice. but I. Took some time to discuss with Manaya more uh, in depth, and uh, also at the Waven stand there was a lot m less people, okay. so I can go there and chat with the game designers and people that were there a, a 
bit more in depth. I I met a content creator. Uh, I think. Um, from the Waven community that was there and talking with the two game de designers. And so we had a bit of a conversation about that. And this was also interesting in terms of uh, people that don't really play Waven, but play Dofus, because one of the questions that I was asking is like, what's the communication like between the different games, right? Yeah. And so it i got an answer that i was kind of expecting seeing okay. how it goes so they they're saying that the vision for each game is different like mm -hmm. there's one person responsible for that vision and they don't really say oh well we're already doing this in this game so we won't do it or we will do it mm -hmm. everyone has their own vision and sometimes it's over sometimes it overlaps sometimes it don't mm -hmm. it doesn't sorry mm -hmm. um but when they have technical challenges then they will go ask each other, like, oh, how did you do the Hotel de Vente and what, what learnings can we get from this? So there's mm -hmm. a bit of, of uh, cross-reference yeah. between the game mm -hmm. and communication, but I think they would benefit from having more of that. But yeah. that, that's my personal opinion. Some things are very interesting in other games where I played a bit of Wakfu, played a bit of Waven, and some, some, of, some of the things I'm like, wow, this is much better, but it's still not in the game. Ah, so, some features yeah. that you've spotted that you'd love for them to bring over to the office that they haven't yet. I yeah, see exactly. Really. And mm -hmm. sometimes I just play Wakfu and I'm like, what is this UI? Like, how am I supposed to interact with this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you say Hotel de Vente in English? Uh, uh, market? Yeah. I think yeah, it's just uh, the marketplace. Market, yeah. yeah, marketplace. So... Yeah, the marketplace is, is very bad in Wakfu, in my opinion. It's much better in Dofus. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, but sometimes stuff, things are better in, in Wakfu, like the fact that you can uh, module your level, to lower down your level to do some content with your lower level wow. friends. Uh, that's something that has been asked a bit, but they don't plan to do it in Dofus. But I think that would be a great idea to get more people in. Because let's say I'm level 200, but I also have a gobble set that I can, when I shrink my level back to level 15, then I could put it on and then go do the gobble dungeon yeah. while having an actual challenge and while explaining like the the game to my friend that is starting. So that would make the new player experience much better, I think. What an incredible idea. I've never heard this before. This is my first time hearing about I've heard of capping your XP so you don't grow up, but yeah. returning, that would be incredible because then you could make a, a, a sort of experiment, a series. You could just decide, I want to try Funaroshi at level 140. Now you have to start yeah, a new character, level it, and it, all the headaches that come with it. Whereas I could just go and theory craft a set, lower down my level to 140, and then go and try it. That is yeah, and even incredible. for PvP to be able to have one character, but then play to different metas. Ah. I'm not a big PvP player, but uh, that, that would be great, right? Yeah. You can level awesome. to level 200, do your quest, and have a big PVM set where you dish amazing damage. And then, you, well, the, met, the level 200 meta is it's not that, that interesting to me. I'll just go back to 199 and then oh. do some so PVM. To, yeah. No need to create a new account, scroll it, and all the headaches. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. incredible, yeah. So uh, I'm understanding that this is a big thing technically to do. Like yeah. it's, 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 it could be very hard and could have a lot of bugs, like unexpected yeah. stuff. If you've done a quest at but, level 200 uh, and then you shrink yourself back to level 15. Uh, can you continue that quest? Like uh, what's, uh, what's happening? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of limitation. Yeah. It could break the game very easily. We don't want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, in Waifu, you, you have this. So it's mm. not impossible that one day we'll have this in Dofus. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's so true. You've mentioned the cross collaboration, and uh, one that they've mentioned very recently is the hero mode that everybody seems to be hung up on, really interested in. We want it to come so you can facilitate as part of smoothing multi accounting. And that already yeah. exists in Waven and other games, I hear. So we uh, could just take Waifu, it over. Yeah. Waifu, Waifu, yeah, Waifu. Uh, 
Waven, you only can play one character at a time, but you mm -hmm. can switch between characters like, like in, instantly, like in place. Like you're, if you have multiple characters in your account, you can like walk to uh, Astro Zap and then whoop, you change your character and the, it doesn't save where the this character was. Whereas in the if you ch if you change like, like one of all of them move at the same time, kind of. Wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think they've been very clear. But this is a discuss the discussion that is hard to have. But they don't want to do hero mode like it is in Wakfu in Dofus. Uh -huh. Okay. But they want you to be able to play multi account uh, on yeah. one client. And the, the, the nuance is important because uh, hero mode, you have a multiple characters on the same subscription. And I think they don't want to move ah. towards that. And why? When you can pay eight, why make you pay for one only? <laughs> it's max three characters yeah. per account. Mm. But yeah. So I yeah. think we'll have some optimization for the performance to have like multiple accounts that you're all paying for in one client. Mm -hmm. And that would be a good performance boost for uh, the small and uh, the lower NPCs. Yeah. But I don't think we'll be able to play multiple characters from the same account all yeah, alongside okay. each mm -hmm. other. And generally seems, speaking, uh, we don't want too much change too quickly, right? If the whole game is going to look different, let's just take the time to see how that works and then have some yeah. bigger updates come later on, but one at a time rather than let's shove everything that we can into December. Revamp this, revamp that, change classes, yeah, exactly. add this new feature. And just, oh, by the way, and we've changed in the whole engine. I mean, just yeah. imagine the Tuesday maintenances. I can't, I, I, ah, no, no. I don't want to not yeah, that's play for be a risky, whole day. But at least they're <laughs> having a long beta phase. And when I was talking to the developer from Dofus, he mm -hmm. told me that there, there was a first long and boring and tedious phase where they just have to transfer the features from flash to unity fair enough and then that's good they yeah. have they they already did like a new create new new stuff like revamp the ui uh mm -hmm. build new new things like the new emotes all of these things that weren't just feature parity but were mm -hmm. actually a, a fresh coat of paint on top of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that, he said that was much more, much more fun to, to code. Yeah, I imagine. And, uh, yeah. It feels like driving a uh, Lamborghini from uh, from a, a Renault 4 or something like that to them. Yeah, <laughs> All exactly. the things they can do, like, ooh, they can rev that engine. Right, we were talking about um, conversations generally that we've had, that you've had, and that marked you, that stayed with you. Uh, we've mentioned the first one with the panel when you were asking the question about the reward, Mr. Reward. And then the second one you've mentioned, Manaya in passing. Was there anything there that is worthy of repeating or telling us about? I think the most important things for you guys is that I was asked actually this question by some people in my guild. Uh, they asked, can you ask them uh, what are the plans for the marketing towards the international community and specifically towards the content creators that Ooh. are not Dofus oriented? Let's say PewDiePie or whatever. I don't know the content creators. Uh, yeah. But the big names, right? And if yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Push pass Dofus into their, their stream and they, they say, oh, well, today I'm trying Dofus and there sh should be a big... Uh, influx of people after such events. So I, I went there and asked Manaya that, and like, like I already said, she's, they're trying to focus. They have a lot of work to do. Their first mm -hmm. task is making sure the existing players are happy. Mm -hmm. But then in a second time, Manaya told me they're, they're working with an external firm to do some marketing, some ads uh, for the English, for the international community, not just English speaking. Um, That's exciting. So we should expect to see, um, also she told me that, uh, they're still working on improving their process to offer the same level of details in their communication to all of the different languages. Right. So oh, yeah. for now, there's still much less stuff in English. Sometimes the titles aren't working. 
it's a work in progress right to have mm-hmm. like the blog the blog post translation sometimes they're later um but the goal is to have a, a level uh to level every community treat them equally and not just say oh well we have more players in french so who cares about ptbr right <laughs> yes i was i had a little addict that i wanted to share with you guys i was surprised the other day about uh there was a blog post that came out you know one of those change logs on a tuesday maintenance and then i open it obviously i see it in french always first and then uh uh oh we need to ban snipes sadly <laughs> i'm going to time you out sorry <laughs> it's a running joke inside of the stream it's as yeah, part yeah. of the rule if you spill it with an e the whiskey that you're automatically banned but i've never banned anyone for that it's a joke <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and... but they got a bit of time to think about what they've done yeah <laughs> and at the same time uh they can see that i do mean it but it's a joke i'm untimely mode um yes uh sorry what, what were we talking about <laughs> that's a thread there <laughs> uh, so you were I talking was... about manaya yeah saying that uh in terms of ads and new user like acquisition Com. and mm. in terms of uh quality of communication we should see uh stuff in the future they're working on it yeah uh, it's hard to work on that and still provide like some kind of crutch while we're waiting yeah uh but uh like there, there's so many things happening all at once right the the 20 year anniversary the unity rework and everyone i i'm guessing everyone is uh booked all the time oh, and sure. they have a for lot sure. of things to to think yeah. about yeah, we haven't seen the whiteboard yet, but I know they have at least a year's worth of work lined up if they didn't add anything new to that in the meantime. The anecdote yeah. I remember is uh, there was a change log on a Tuesday and my usual instinct is to go there and start oh, translating. Yeah. It was about the cosmetics, you know, the new tabs and stuff like that to do with Unity. Oh Having yeah, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it. The, uh, the story I'm trying to tell here is that once that was released, I saw it in French. And then I immediately started doing some translating on the chat at the pub, posting all the cool things. And then Eslick just links me the one in English. I was like, what, what, what? This isn't meant to be happening. <laughs> this is new. Yeah, they're, they're stealing your job. <laughs> yeah, they, they took my job. on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you getting good? <laughs> yeah i don't have anything to complain about anymore how dare you yes. no nah, it will please me if they just put the communication out there i don't mind being rewarded in in different ways but it's it's still a chore doing the translation work and stuff like that it's a labor of yeah. love as i call it it is necessary to be done now at this point in time and i've promised that i will continue doing it but at the moment they have anything in place that's not the kind of content I want to be creating. I want to be playing the game itself. I want to be making guides, different kind of content than just sitting yeah. down and bringing what they are already saying just in a different language. Yeah. Having discussions about the uh, cool stuff instead of uh, saying, why are there so many bots? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some challenges with that as well. Like when they talk about the artistic direction and I'm trying to translate that, like, what the I know about artistic direction and terms in marketing and things like that. like what what am i doing i feel like an imposter sat in a room who's unqualified yeah. and just for some reason has a seat so that will spare me those negative feelings in the future uh, just so we can wrap up because i'm conscious we are at the one hour mark and i yep. tend to do this for all guests where we take like a three minute break use the loo refill our glasses of water and just be fresher so we can segue into unity and we will upon our return we will put up the fight and we will get all of Eastos's uh uh first hand experience trying it after that should we take a break we make yeah, three five minutes how are you feeling three five yeah let's take uh five cool let's do that and for everyone in the chat we shall be back with something completely fresh and new we've seen the team showcase the fight but today we will get Istos's experience from having been at the Japan Expo himself who tried the game he's not told us what his score was but we have a mini game whereby we will try and guess his score and the closest person will get 
what 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 have you got for us today? <laughs> so I asked the uh, the guys at the <laughs> fight to uh, give me one extra locust shield. Oh, let's so that go! I can give it to you guys. <laughs> uh, and remarkable. yes, you you guys will have to try to guess my best score, and then the closest one will win the shield. Let's go! That, that is very generous of you. I can tell you for a fact. I would have redeemed that bad boy faster than I can spell my name. <laughs> of course, I got one for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah. guys can can start your guesses, but I will only take into account one. There will only be one per person. So Snipes has entered his. So. Without further ado, we take the break for five minutes, we come back and talk about the fight and sometime throughout the conversation when we mention scores on thing or things like that, we will do the giveaway so you guys, one of us can go back with... And actually, I'm going to play myself because you haven't... Can you confirm that you've not told me the score yet? <laughs> I haven't, yeah. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, we will put a break for five minutes, go refresh our drinks, feel better about ourselves, come back all rejuvenated and full of energy, and then we can attack the Japan Expo fight that we've seen yesterday from the team, but with a French lens, a new pair of eyes with yeah. you guys so we shall be back in a few minutes five minutes oh so vini pego asked uh Hello, do you Vinny. have any opinion on why ankama pushed for them to be separate games and why one can benefit from that many great features from the other one uh talking about wakfu uh, i was talking about wakfu a bit earlier uh -huh. and uh i think they had um a very different an, an idea of a concept that was very different from uh, from mm -hmm. Dofus at, at the first, and they wanted to have like much more community driven. Like at the first draft of Wakfu, if I remember correctly, there were no NPCs. Like quests were given like by the community. You would just meet other players, and they would say, "Hey, can you?" There were no even. I I think there were no currency. You had to do like trading <laughs> items for other items what <laughs> so that was very ambitious wow as we all know it transitioned to be something much more uh, much closer to what what we have with dofus so i think the goal was to do something revolutionary and unfortunately it didn't work as well as they hoped um, gotcha and they couldn't just like push Dofus in that direction because it was such so much difference. So that's why they, they made two games. But in the end, yeah, it's one of the thing that is uh, unfortunate about Arkama is that they're making like a bunch of different clones of the same game. Dofus, Dofus Unity, <laughs> Dofus Retro. Retro. And the new uh, Unity Mobile as well in the future. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's... Wow. Unfortunate that they're like splitting their efforts, but at the same time, they they that gives them the opportunity to test different features in one of their games and say, oh well, we did yeah. Waven using Unity that that works well. Let's let's yeah. use it to to Dofus as well. Or I'm seeing so, uh, chat is buzzing with guesses. They seem to think that yeah. you are the holder of the record i've seen 132k right i'll take this opportunity <laughs> um, to calibrate everyone's expectation right me. hold on so well, can you tell us what the minimum is we've heard this in the last live what is the minimum points just to win that card what is the strict minimum uh, it was forty thousand. Forty thousand. and so, what was so the best the reward, score yeah. the best score the best in the score entire was event one hundred and forty thousand. One and forty. yes okay yeah so this the score that Istos has done is somewhere between 40k and 141k, which I imagine I think it was Laniel who did it. It was his friend, uh, Je suis une Clio deux. Oh wow, <laughs> that's quite cool. And then Laniel was just just below, and they were they were grinding, they were like in the queue always. All the time. <laughs> Go yeah, on I had, uh, right. had a chat with them where I was next to them and they were super enthusiastic about trying to beat their own score, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Right, so w l let's... Let's reset the counter for everyone because I didn't give you this piece of information and I feel like it's unfair to take your previous guess when you didn't know that the maximum was and what the minimum was. So, starting from this line. 
I think the ad just finished. Starting from the line I've just put in now, feel free to add your guess and I will take one per person. So if you change your mind later on, I will count the first one. So what was Istos's score? Right. As people are having fun guessing how good or terrible you are at that game in particular, yeah. let's segue to our main event. And I know you've prepared a little something for us that you wanted me to show. Um, Paul, uh, th this section is entirely yours. You tell me how you want it to be. You've told me the tech side of it, but essentially, I'm your tech guy. I will press play when you say, I will pose, and you're doing all the talking, okay? All right. <laughs> all right. So yeah, first, the, the, the first impression is when you arrive at the stand, you, you can see the PCs and all of the people playing. It looks, it looks like Waven a bit. I don't know if you guys played Waven. I mentioned it earlier. I think one of the reasons is that there is life, right? It's not just an image. You can <laughs> Sorry, see. Sorry, I couldn't help but see. Savvy did his savvy thing. The mo <laughs> when he puts any <laughs> item on the marketplace to sell it, he will add 420 at the end or 69. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Welcome, Sam. Good to see you. Welcome, Potato Park. <laughs> Gizem hasn't. I've not seen you in a while. Welcome. I won you. Welcome to the chat as well. Zach, Neo, Snipes, the usuals. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that interruption. I couldn't help but laugh because. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you said you were saying the first thing that you've noticed is that everything had life to it. It's moving, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm guessing like uh, the artistic direction that they chose to go towards is a bit similar also to Waven. Uh, mm. It's not exactly the same, but they they are leaning in into that that direction. I, I'm not sure exactly how to put words um, to it, but uh, mm -hmm. it's however it's you fancy. From, yeah, it's different from from the there. There were more detail a bit. Some people are criticizing that they think it looks uh, too similar to a mobile game because they have less details, a bit more cartoony. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was my first impression. I I liked it personally. I think it looks still looks like Dofus, really? uh, but it looks uh, better. To me the, than before the, the okay. fact that it's moving it's very interesting do you still and, recognize and dofus in this you don't feel and like I'm, you've stepped into a pc loaded with a different game altogether yeah can you turn down a bit the the music, the music. oh no yeah. yeah thanks oh. let's pose it all together so you don't have any distractions okay. whatsoever no no worries. cool 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 so yeah, my first impression was that, and then I went in the queue. Hierbeck explained explained the the game to me. Asked me like, "What do you know about the game?" And uh, the things <laughs> that were different. <laughs> yeah, the, the things that were different from uh, playing Dofus normally is that you don't have a specific class. Mm -hmm. You're just playing a, a representative of the twelve, and uh, that you will draft your spells. This is a special mechanic to showcase a bit the, the new things that you, we can do with Unity. It's not necessarily that there's going to be something to draft spells uh, <laughs> realistically, but <laughs> just to showcase that, hey, the, the game designers have had a super nice idea where you can uh, draft spells. Easy. The devs are like, let's do it. We can do it. <laughs> it's technically possible. Yeah. So that was one of the, the big change. And the other change, of course, was the kind of beautiful tactical mode. That we yes. Be able to see. Once you start the fight, I'll press play. Yeah, exactly. So what's happening so, here? They, they, they've done all the explanation of the fight, the background. Maybe we could just gloss over that. We know the theme, what it is. Uh, just focus on the elements that maybe you feel like they haven't addressed that are particular to your experience. Yeah. So the... The thing is, one one thing that I don't I think it should be improved in Adolphus is the turn length. I mm -hmm. always find myself lacking time to to think about my turn, <laughs> and I have one of my friends that 
plays much less than me and he's mm -hmm. playing Elio, uh, so he, he's always missing some time to, to think about his redirections of portal yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And his biggest complaint about the game is why isn't the why aren't the turns longer? So yeah. one of the things that was that felt specifically good about this fight is that the turns were longer because it was a demo fight. It was accessible for everyone. So I had time to read my spells, look at everything. And when you're drafting, also the game was... The com the timer was on pause. So you okay. had time to look at the different things. This so, is yeah, the draft. Oh, yeah. So this is the drift. Maybe you can pause. Mm -hmm. So these are not spells that... Uh, that are existing in the game. They just took some names and some animations. It's not necessarily... Uh, that was something that Papino said, uh, I think, in the last stream. When you see... Uh, I don't know in English. How do you say that? Wrath. Iops Wrath, yeah. Iops Wrath. It's not yeah. necessarily going to look like that. It's, it's going to mm. hit much harder than it was doing, like, 2K or something. Or, or <laughs> disappointed. Yeah. So the mechanics... But, were completely yeah, was, reworked for uh, yeah. all of an invention. All the the spells were an invention from a game designer. He took some animations. He took some names. He associated them with um, the different gods. You can see mm -hmm. uh, Kra, like a flip or a Rogue, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe I'm wrong with the names yeah, because I'm used no, to no, no, them. They are no, they're correct. Every single one of them is right. Yeah. And so, so you take your time reading uh, what, what it does. Is that what you're doing here? Yeah, you're hovering over everyone and then they have specific uh, descriptions, specific effects. So al we can see it. We can see the, the spell in the middle is uh, a movement spell that boosts uh, you in power. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's see what they pick for the first. I think they're going to go with the damage. Gonna take, yeah, the damage <laughs> spell. That's the best. Uh... Oh, no, you went through the power. Oh, jeez. Also, yeah, that, that's one of the very good spells because it boosts your power. Really? And for this fight, specifically, yeah, all the boosts were permanent. Oh, so, so every time you use power... it, 200 power is infinite. Infinite, yes. Oh. So this was there was this mechanic of ramping up slowly to, to do a yeah. massive amount of damage uh, in the last turns. Uh, so wow. at first you start with the basic spells, and then eventually you, you go... It's you, incredible. How did you find this stronger. out? So at first, uh, you don't have that much time to read it, everything, but while discussing with people and while reading, you see there's a spell that, that grants you a MP, for instance. Mm -hmm. When you hit people, it steals MP from them. And yeah. then I was like, why am I starting my turn with like 14 MP? <laughs> <laughs> and so I looked and I, I noticed that it was permanent. So all the, wow. the boosts from the spells are, are permanent. And this, is, this was one of the most important things to understand to do a high score. Gotcha. Like the this Antrecha spell that you said you said it's not damage, I don't care, yeah, right? Yeah, but I've changed my mind immediately. It's the best spell ever. <laughs> but it it grants you bonus uh, power for the whole game. For the that whole fight. Insane, yeah. So yeah. And you can use it twice. Right, so you had to, to figure out sort of the mechanic of the game. How many how many tries have you done in total? Uh, I think I've done maybe ten tries. It's hard okay. to say exactly. Okay. But yeah, did maybe you hear it, that chat? Take that into 10. account for your scores. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vinny Pego was asking how many times I tried it. <laughs> so yeah, I tried it about 10 times. But there were people that tried, like Laniel and his friend, they were trying and trying and trying again and again, and again <laughs> trying to find the, the right skills. Okay. <laughs> um,. Wow, so, so what were some of the first things that stood out to you from having sat in your PC the previous day and played the game as you know it, and then the next day you sat using Unity? What was, what can you tell us about some of the first things that stood out to you as 
wow, this is cool, I'm going to enjoy it. And perhaps even cover some things that were shocking that they were still there. One of the things that uh, I like the most about the, the these changes is, well, of course, having seeing the map around the fight. This is obvious, but uh, the the MP, how you see where you're going with the MP. Yeah. Uh, you have this Movement green circle, preview. and then you 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 draw kind of an arrow, mm. and then you can see exactly what movement you're gonna do. This feels much better for me than uh, wow, than act how it is actually. Remarkable. And, yeah. Of course, like you see, there are a lot of enemies. You have sometimes a lot of MP. Uh, you will have previews of big AOE spells, and it felt fast, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's it's smooth. Uh, things are. Are feeling much better than the current game. Nice. Okay. So the general feel of it is that it's a mega. General feel is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Especially with that many uh, enemies. Yeah. That in the map. It could have been like a one v one, and we don't see really that much of a difference. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of enemies. They they go. They do their turn. It it's pretty fast. How they how fast they play. Sometimes mm. when you play the office and you fight an enemy that has a ridiculous amount of MP or that has big animations. It takes forever for them to play, right? Quite right, uh, yeah. But then now you see that uh, it goes on. The You don't have to wait for an hour to beat your turn again. Yeah, so, the timer is taking its time. It's slow, so you get to plan your terms yeah. and see the pre-visualizations and things like that i think the clar clarity is pretty is pretty good there's a lot of things that are very similar to how it is right now the the preview of the damage and stuff like that mm. i don't know if you if we can see but um when you hit with the purple spells mm -hmm. it's like 25 percent to do on uh, every single element so the preview is pretty big yeah that was a bit uh, daunting for, for new players, maybe, uh, mm. to have this big preview up here. Yeah, it doesn't make um, much sense if you don't know the game very well. Uh, the other thing I've yeah. noticed is that, you see, you, you guys can see in the background how the whole thing becomes more animated and stuff like that. Uh, is yes, that distracting to you at all or something like that? No, actually, I kind of felt bad. So not noticing it more. What is he? Uh, they were like, oh, we've done this bad that evolves. And it's like, how to maximize my score. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't notice that much of the uh, the wind picking up and stuff like that. <laughs> you it were was too just, focused I was on just the map. Too, too focused <laughs> on the match and trying to, yeah. <laughs> to win this Lotus yeah. Shield that I'm going to give to you guys, right? Nice. I, I think I've missed something that has happened in the chat. I saw the animation, but I was still looking at the same time. Uh, please forgive me if I've missed something important that happened in the chat. Uh, but yeah, please do carry on. Let me know when you want me to pose so, uh, in a particular place or something. Yeah, so what turn are we at right now? I, I can't see the timer. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's nine. So turn we're nine. in turn nine, yeah. Th mm -hmm. That was one of the biggest thing that annoyed me is that the ready button is on the left instead of on the bottom right. Yeah, I was always so... searching for it, <laughs> but yeah. at least I, we could move it. So I, I moved it to towards the uh... the familiar place, and I could I could gotcha, feel at home. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. It always needs to be here at the bottom right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and one thing that is nice also is that. In, inside of the the ready button, you can see mm. which whose turn is it and how much time they have for their turn, right? So ah, you can you see, see uh, it's one minute. Yellow. And right mm. now it says uh, "feinto," which means uh, "end your turn." Mm. But if you go back a bit in the video uh, or forward, no, it's last turn, right? So go back a bit. When uh, oh, it shows the the timer they have as well, twenty two seconds. Yes, exactly. Because right now, mm. if you want to see how much time this person has, 
you need to look in the timeline and there's a little line that, that is progressing <laughs> yeah, towards yeah. The, yeah. the slowly filling up their their icon but now you can see the information is there yeah. and uh, yeah you you the overlay like when you click on some person to see their their state and stuff like that is it's small improvements of course i i'll have to wait before i can try it fully with in within the beta to give my full opinion but um yeah everything felt oh so let, let's do a pause here mm -hmm. to, to talk about the end uh the stats for the end of the game right yes so, oh yeah so this is all in french yeah so it's mm. damage dealt damage received damage blocked shield applied healing yeah thanks <laughs> and then uh healing that you gave to others and then healing that you received and then how many enemies did you kill so mm -hmm. 11 at the end this is the x so this is very interesting uh mm -hmm. i don't really feel right now the need to know these stats but it's it's always fun uh, some something that i like to do is Sometimes I go back to the history and see how many damage did I deal this turn. <laughs> it's when so I cool. A, yeah, when I get a great turn uh, in portals and deals <laughs> upward of, of 10k, I'm like, oh, I put it all in my calculator. <laughs> I dealt 11k damage this turn. Amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's remarkable. So, and they've grayed out a couple of... Um things here that they didn't let us see yeah now. i can't wait to see what the the other tabs are gonna showcase i want to see like can i see stats of other people like right Summary now it's only statistics. a single yeah we don't yeah. know that yet probably statistics will show you like these stats for other people because mm -hmm. i'm interested in uh trash talking my best friend to say look how <laughs> much less damage you did them here right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hello, welcome, Aslix. Yeah, that is remarkable. That is awesome. And you can still have the old stuff, like uh, how long the fight lasted, how many turns, yes. the percentage XP you've got, like the boosts or buffs or area bonuses. But I've noticed two things. Two things that stood out to me. You no longer have that little minimize button that turns it into just one line. It's gone. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's true. Uh, I don't use that, so... It won't be missed I always for have me. it on. I can't stand that big, <laughs> big board at the end on four yeah. accounts because I need to switch and close out on all four of them. And if you I just want to answer to Vinny Pego, like this wasn't uh, my try. This was part of a stream that Ankama did. Uh, there was no uh, possibility to like plug yourself into the PC and record stuff. You need to. You needed to film with your phone or with the external camera if you were mm. there. So kind of uh, not a yeah, not a great experience. So I chose to showcase to talk about the fight while showing you the, the live stream. Yep. But... <laughs> it's it's not the five K, that's not my best <laughs> try. This was their first try. But yeah, it was the team. <laughs> Yeah, let's maybe uh, go to the next fight that they did. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll explain a bit to you why this, uh, the se their second try was much better and what spells that they get, what was interesting about it. Um, so, like I said, mm. bonuses that you can get um, are permanent in this fight. Yeah. So, and how it works is that every time you draw, you have four draws. To, to draft a spell, they have specific pools. So there's the first pool, the second pool, the f third, and so on. So what you needed is the first spell to be a buff spell, a buffing spell that would increase your damage. Then in the second pool, you had a spell that would increase your MP and AP permanently. Mm. <laughs> and then with those two spells at the first, uh, uh, in the first and second slot, you could do a massive amount of damage if you had AoE spells. Oh wow, um, yeah. For the rest of them. Repeat. Because repeat at the end you, you end up yeah. with like 30 plus AP. 
So you could spam a lot and try to do like push enemies together and do big AoEs to, to really crank up the damage. And how many of them would want... appear in a wave towards the end? Uh, so this depends on how many you killed. Uh... So if you do more damage earlier early on and you kill them, um, you would get oh, getting more. <laughs> more enemies. So yeah. if we look at the second fight that they did, um, we I can explain a bit to you like what spells did they draft, and. Uh, and I'm just noticing some little details here, aside from the environment in the background as well. Um, the fact that he's hovering on top of a mob, and you're getting a little thing right here, like a full-on yes, pre-visualization exactly. this... of the mob's resistance and stuff, that you can pin, you can keep that in permanent, permanent yes, exactly. on one side of the screen. You can see the stats, or let's say you, you do some... MP removal on, on a monster. You, if you have this his stat page pinned, you can see um, how many MPs he has left and stuff like that. Oh, it updates this real pretty, time. Yeah, this is really wow. interesting. Um, also, one thing that I haven't seen mentioned that much is that with Unity, we're supposed to have... Um, we're supposed to lose the up the option to fight on the current map that we're on. So that's. How do you mean? I'm kind of I'm kind of sad about that. So every every uh, zone of the game will have a pool of maps of ah, combat maps. I see. Maps yeah, 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 yeah. With mm. the let's say you're on Aquadala, you'll have this one, for instance, without the big purple portal. Mm -hmm. But you'll have a pool of maps. And one thing that is sad is that you no longer have an infinity of different maps to fight on. Mm. And it breaks a bit the immersion to not fight on <laughs> this specific map. Yes. But um, what is nice about that is that they're going to be much, much more standardized. So mm. one thing that is annoying me right now when I'm playing Dofus is like, mm -hmm. oh, this map is on the top of my screen, so I need to move all the UI that is on top of my screen to see the enemies. And then, oh, this map is on the me. bottom. <laughs> bottom right. so let's let's move all the, the let's things. Let's move it back up, yeah. So I think we'll have <laughs> maps that are more of a square format and take the middle of your screen. So you can put your UI Stop all around it. Oh, wow. And it's not going to block it ever. So th that would be very nice. Uh, and so remarkable, I, yeah. I'm using uh, this to, to segue from the pinning the character sheet if you pin something at, at some place there is a low risk that someone will just walk under it right i'm not entirely sure what you mean aslix but i take your point um Istos. have you noticed also that the interfaces are a bit um uh, uh, hold on can you ask if with that map change there won't be a way to see map spawns before starting a fight since you get teleported to another map yeah, I'm guessing that right now when you it's when you press L, I think that you can see the the squares where the fight is gonna be. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that when you press L, you're gonna be seeing uh, the whole map, not just the squares, right? Oh, the, the starting positions. I see. Yeah, the you're gonna be seeing instead of just the starting position in the current map because you would fight on the current map, actually. Mm -hmm. Like right now, if you go to Dofus and you press L, you'll see the starting positions. And that to map. see if it's close by, a, a close combat, or a long range. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm guessing, my, my guess, this is not certified, but uh, I, I have not uh, checked that with anyone. But my best guess is that you would see the whole map with the starting positions Ooh. on it when you press L. That would be, I think, the, the best case scenario. I don't really see a reason why they would not do that. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, otherwise that, it would be hard to would... predict. Mm. And it, sometimes uh, the map is very impactful for the fight, depending on the, the team that you play. So right now, so the first, the first spell that they picked on the fight is Coin Throw. Coin Toss, yeah, it's, it's a really yeah. cool spell. <laughs> and so it hits really hard. Life steal. But also it gives you a uh, 10% damage uh increase for 3 turns. So like I said okay. uh, what I said earlier about it being permanent, 
but maybe yeah. you can try to pause it when we see the over overview of uh, coin toss. If not, I could not go back to bad. it. I could go back to it as soon as they hover on top of it. But yeah, this is as part of the. This is just unique for this fight, by the way. This is not something that we will ever see maybe come I can move my head. anytime I don't soon, know at least. You guys can see it. Maybe the <laughs> other side. Yeah, it just reads that it will give you 10% extra damage for three turns. Long exactly. Range damage, and, you can, yeah. and, and you can do it twice per turn. Yes. It costs 3 AP. And so that, that means if you 60%. stack it six, six times, you have 60% damage, which is mm. very high. Uh, instead of hitting uh, enemies for 1k with it, you'll be hitting for 1.6k uh, in a context where the more damage you deal, the more points you get. Uh, this is very impactful, and this applies to all of your other spells as long as you hit from a distance. Okay. Uh, to everyone who has just joined us now, because I'm conscious Eslix has just joined it himself and others as well. Um, if you have already given your number, please don't put your numbers again. Yes, this is Dofus Unity Decoy. Uh, uh, we are playing a game for a Locust Shield that will be given away today. The person who guesses the score, the best score that Istos has done in the Ankama stand when he tried this fight in particular, will go away with a shield today. So please put one number. If you have already put one, don't do that again. But if you haven't yet, make sure that you put a number between 40,000, which is the minimum to win a card, and 141,000, which was the best score during the entire Japan Expo. Make sure you put that in the chat. So at the end of this presentation, I will, I will pose. He will reveal the number. And then we go back and find the person who has the closest score to the actual correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm conscious uh, of time here, Istos. And I just wanted you to sort of tell us... Think for a quick second about the extremes, things that have shocked you to still be there, that you perhaps have spoken to a developer about immediately after that. Has Have you had anything like that where you were like, what the hell is this still doing here? <laughs> like, nothing very shocking, but uh, one thing that uh, is annoying to me right now and it's still in the game is that uh, sometimes if you queue stuff too fast, uh, the game will not keep up and uh and update so uh when one of the examples that i noticed and i and i thought talked about to the devs is that if you click on a spell and then immediately queue up a uh, movement then the preview of the spell will still appear at the old position so that's annoying but you told me uh, in our earlier conversation that they were they addressed this in the stream in the live stream from the Japan, right? Yes, they did. Yeah, they mentioned oh. a mechanism whereby, um, let's say you have five spells that you're stacking. Each one has a certain length of animation. The moment you stack more than one, the game automatically shortens the length of all the animations involved so that you can have a fast turn just because you have communicated to the game by stacking multi actions that you are prioritizing speed so what it does is it plays the game with you if you want to click and watch the animation it lets you do that but if you want to get going, move on to the next thing, you can stack all of your actions. If you prepare your turn, you know what you're doing, stack all of them. And then the animations all get sort of squeezed into yeah, yeah. a short little... So the, we don't, we don't know how it looks like yet. That's working properly, I think. Uh, I'm not sure because I was thinking about everything. So I, I, I this isn't something familiar for me, th th this whole fight. So I wasn't just spamming my keyboard. <laughs> yes, but, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but i sense. think this is properly working is just um like one thing sometimes right now if you cast a spell on an enemy and then you want to cast another spell on an enemy that is behind because you know that you'll kill him uh -huh. then while you're previewing the the next your next spell the allowed targets 
aren't updated. Aren't updated, yeah. yeah. So when you kill the enemy and you try to move through the the square that he was occupying or cast through him because you know he's gonna be dead, then it won't, uh, he, it won't let you. Right, your character yeah. will do like this unnecessary movement to go through, go yeah. around. It. His old have position. You, so, have you seen that that is still the case? Does it still exist? I'm assuming that something like that would be still problematic. The thing that I've seen is really the what you say the when you cast a spell and then move while the preview is loading, mm -hmm. and the preview will still be from your old position. Oh, that still exists now. And is that the thing that it you've said exists. you've spoken to Rebecca about? Yes, exactly. I've spoken to okay. Rebecca about that. And he told me that he would look into it. Mm -hmm. Well, not him specifically, but that they would investigate this. Mm -hmm. But As this was... Uh, correct in something here. It will cancel the animation rather than do them all in a short lapse of time. Well, actually, every animation has a breakpoint uh in this line let's say halfway there halfway through um it can stop playing and cue another animation instead mm. so let's say you would hit someone with a sword right mm -hmm. so you have a ramp up animation but then you the sword enter uh, contacts with the enemy mm -hmm. and then you have the the arrest of the swing for instance okay yeah right? But the rest of the swing isn't that in important. Gotcha. So that can but just go... For, to, mm. to keep visual uh, consistency, you kind of need to, the sword to hit the target okay. to, for it to make sense, right? right so the first okay. is not cancelable, but once you hit the, the rest of the swing, you, you can skip it by queuing up another thing. Gotcha. I think makes that's sense. the best way to explain it. That, that makes perfect sense for me, yeah. Yeah. And honestly... One thing that I'm just spotting right now, uh, and, and I've mentioned this multiple times, is how the entire environment in the background is sort of scaling to match the vibe as you're advancing and stuff like that. And it's not causing any fluidity. Look at the previews and stuff like that. There's the occasional yeah. flicker, but I think that is more to do with the recording of it than the actual gameplay. And I just wanted to specify, this fight you're seeing here was performed on a potato PC. What can you tell us about the PCs you've used on the Obi <laughs> stuff? I don't know the, the technical specs of it, but I'm <laughs> guessing it was not that potato uh, because they didn't want to... For sure, they didn't want to, to have any lag, right, at the Japan the first mm. time that people try Unity, so they probably had at least a graphical card, right? This is not like uh, integrated graphics stuff. Uh. It could be, you know, because it's only running it one be. client and it's not too... Yes, but you know. like, that would be a big risk if I were... Was, yeah, it would be, yeah. Uh... <laughs> the like, best PC possible to... Yeah. And then again, you'll have to do that for... How many were there? Like 12 for Dofus, 12 for Waven, and then 6 for uh, Wakfu? Was that right? Um, 12, 12 and 6, yeah. Yeah. Uh. So 30 in total, yeah. And the presentation yeah, so we have covered yesterday was done on a laptop without a graphics card, that is for sure. Because we have okay. seen the battery low thing <laughs> come up. And <laughs> on the basis of that, to save face, it was like, yeah, we're doing this on a laptop and it doesn't have a graphics card. And that's part of the testing phase when showcasing the thing is they have paid special attention to this and they will continue to. They want Dofus to be something that you can play on a potato. And that is not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. I'll just take this time to, because we're approaching ten, turn 10. If you mm -hmm. press pause right now, mm -hmm. yep. you can see at the top of the screen. Woo! Yeah, but just below the score, yeah. you have the, all of these uh, little skulls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, means uh, how many enemies will spawn on the next wave. Six. <laughs> okay. So you can influence this by killing more enemies and... <laughs> I'll just go through quickly the the other spells that that he thought that he picked. The uh -huh. red spell is a spell from Feka that will steal AP and MP from enemies. Ooh. So that that means you have a lot of AP and MP. I don't know if we can mm. see how much. Twenty eight and twenty. Let me move away. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so he 28, has twenty eight AP. So that that's crazy. 
And mm. then uh, the last two spells, you have the Fekar Glyph that we can see uh, on the, the ground. Yeah. And so that deals big AoE damage that is boosted if you're not close to the enemy by the coin toss. And then Baraka is the, the last blue spell, which hits three enemies, in the, the three closest enemies to you, mm -hmm. for a random amount of damage. Wow. And so we saw it, we saw it do 5k uh, a bit earlier in the fight. I don't know uh, mm. if you were paying attention, but um, this deals a lot of damage because it, the, the, it can do a lot of damage because it deals random, uh, random amount of damage. So this is a pretty awesome. good run. It's 100 and 1k. Yeah, right he's now. still playing. And this is the turn 10, right? So we've mm. had the, the six enemies, the six skulls spawn. Yeah. Now we can see he's spamming the, the coin toss to boost his power. I think he'll do another one. Yeah. Yeah, and you see this hits. Oh, well, this guy was already dead. But he's I need to give him for... some feedback. He just wasted that uh, life steal spell on something that was nearly dead. Yeah, but he, I think he's fine. At the end of his turn, the game is is done. <laughs> yeah. so now you see Baraka with hit the three closest people to him. Yeah, one hundred thirteen. And then he's gonna probably do some AOE, the AOE spell. He's had he has so many <laughs> MP you can see right yeah so many AP and MP he doesn't know what to do with himself <laughs> okay oh yeah. 119 is this the perfect opportunity for you to reveal what your best score was <laughs> yeah yeah should we do it or should we give, so hold on. can we get let's the, the let's, list of people to see yeah, who's just, the just closest just one one quick, uh, let's just give them one or two minutes. I'll just re-explain. We've just okay, watched perfect. a fight, so we know the difficulty involved in reaching score 119. The strict minimum to get a card, which Istos has showed us a couple of minutes ago, is to reach 40,000. And the best score that has ever been reached during the four days of the expo was 141k. I will accept one answer per person in the chat. If you haven't put your guess, put it down now. But essentially, in about 20 seconds, we will draw a name. We will, we will reveal what the best score is. And then we will pick a winner. And having said that, I need to put my guess as well. <laughs> okay, or... So the score by middle was uh, 119,000. He smashed it. He did so well. Let me show you it again. He had 119k, which is remarkable. We've seen how many waves, how many of them were there in the map. It was overwhelming after a bit. <laughs> it gets crazy. Yeah, I can't even imagine 141. Like, the whole map must have been so full after a while. Yeah, so the other spell that was necessary to do, like the 140k, was uh -huh. um, an AoE spell around you that would deal damage right now, and then apply a poison depending on how many MP the enemies would use. Mm. So you, you do the AoE and then you run away, and then the people follow you, and then they get hit a second time. I think it was the Enutroph's uh, spell. It was blue, wasn't it? I've exactly, seen the yes, showcase. Yes. Uh, that looked really cool, yeah. <laughs> I see why you've done 10 tries as well. <laughs> yeah, so, alright. Yeah, right. Are you guys ready for the oh, no, big let announcement? Me, let me put From dashes. Roll, so, no guesses below this line will be accepted. I will go up, but I will yeah. not go below it. So, what was your final score, Istos? Drum roll! My, my best <laughs> score was 103,000. No way! Well done! <laughs> wow. Yeah. 103,000. Yeah. I can't remember the the exact... Wow. You're, well You're missing done. one zero, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm missing his deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, made me look bad. <laughs> yeah, no, pro PVM are here, pro PVM. <laughs> <laughs>
Boom. Correct so score I on think... 3k. So the Do we know who got the right answer? Would be 118. Fun Drazen? 108. Yo, Zach got it right. Sadly he has left us for the night. He has said goodnight a while ago and left. <laughs> It's all right. Uh, if you if he's on your Discord, then I can contact him to yes, give the, the code. He is Perfect. indeed. Oh, oh, oh. 103. We've got 80k. We've got 121, 113, 93. I'll tell you why I've put down 85k. Yeah, and this is ahead. a bit of. I, I've cheated a bit here. I've used the uh, big stats. So yesterday during the presentation, they've told us, Papino has mentioned that if you took all the players that have tried and you plotted them on a graph, you'll see that the median score was there was a glass ceiling he described it as at 80 to 85k. So most people yeah. who tried and had a good try stacked a good 85 and then most of them died there. And only a few of them managed to get past 85. And you're one of them, which is remarkable. Well done. <laughs> oh, Who said 106, maybe? Hold on, let me and start uh, from the top of the line again. Oh, yeah. Where is the line? Where is the line? Where is the line? So there's the line. We've got 93k. I think, yeah. I, I think I won you said... 106, but before the line. Yes. No, so exactly. I, I, I warn you the first uh, that you've put after the line was 79,000. I can show you that. And, and then before the line, it was 106. Yeah. So I think still, it's still Zach, isn't it? Have you looked through all of them, Istos? It, it's still uh, Fondrazen? I don't yeah. know exactly. I, yeah, it's Fondrazen. Yeah, Zach. I still think it is Zach. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. Aslex nearly was there. <laughs> we had 113. Tuna had 114. Not very far. <laughs> 119. Yeah, that is remarkable. 106 was before the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was before the line. So, Zach has won the shield he did say that i should get it if he if i if i if he were to win but i will still make sure that he gets it you either give it to him directly or pass the code on to me and i'll make sure he gets it but zach Perfect. has won and zach gets the shield <laughs> congrats to yeah. zach congrats zach i will send him a little <laughs> snippet of this yeah afterwards cool perfect I think we've pretty much covered everything that there was on the agenda. Your first impressions, things that blew your mind, things that you thought, why is still here? And you've even went as far as speaking with Ribek directly about this. And I've noticed that towards the end of that day, not only did he tell you directly that he was going to do something about it, but towards the end of the day, while giving his sort of summary of how the day went, he said something happened. Someone pointed something out and we've put the team on it already. So I think but before the day ended, he was on it. <laughs> that's that's nice. To, one of the nicest thing for me was to actually feel the the great vibe that, that was there. I don't know if it's, this was on stream, but at the end of day three, um, day three was the Saturday. So this was the day where the, the most people were there. Yeah. And... Uh, there's a small community of cosplayers of the Ankama universe and they, they have a Discord and they, they chatted there. To, they said, let's meet on Saturday at the stand. Wow. So there was a lot of uh, cosplayers for, from all of the different media from Ankama. Mm -hmm. And the last fight that they did was they, they removed everyone and only the cosplayers were playing. So we had like a full table of... Uh, Contarbo, Elisael, and all of these <laughs> characters from, from Memphis and Waku. And they yeah. were all playing together, trying to get the highest score. And that was very, that was so fun to, to see, right? Yeah. I think it was one of the things that pleased me the most is seeing how in character people were. <laughs> they were living it. Not only trying stuff. I think I've missed out on that vibe. I don't understand it. I've never been to anything remotely close to this. Uh, and it's something that I wanted to end on, your appreciation 
of that we're not gonna get there because we still have one last thing to cover before we can smooth things down just because i'm also keeping an eye on the time we've reached the two hour are you happy for us to add one last question and then yeah, start to sure. wind things out okay thank you very for much sure, for yeah. that we appreciate your time and we don't want to take it for granted so the last thing that i wanted to sort of tie everything with we've heard your pre during your appreciation of it and the thing i wanted to ask you which is um, something i'm really curious about is what will be your first moves when the beta opens on the 13th what are you trying first what how will you try and break the game or appreciate it to see what unity is really like yeah i'm not that much into like trying to break the game and find every last bug because okay it's the beta right the beta is gonna last three months of course there's gonna be some bugs yeah I, I think i'm just gonna play it like i would normally play okay and try to kind of ask myself after a game session like how much smoother that was was that like what was <laughs> yeah, see what did i yeah. notice like oh wow this is this usually is much harder or i can't seem to find this thing in the new ui or whatever yeah. i'll just play like i would normally and try to to see what what sticks out, what what is uh, is it too loud for you? I, by the way, the music. No, it's perfect. Like that. Thanks. Okay, cool. Sorry. So yeah, just just try to play normally mm -hmm. and start a new maybe a new uh, class that I haven't tested mm, yet. That's try to cool. like <laughs> learn some new new class at the same time while discovering the Unity. Wow look at the new animations i know that one of my good friends that i used to play with uh always said i want to do a forgerance i don't know what's the yeah. name in english the exact same forgerance, the same just because the spell animation looks so nice <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah because it's one of the latest class uh so they, they exactly. had a bit more budget to, to look at that and when you see mm. like the other old class it doesn't look the same, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah, I know. I, it's like <laughs> rocks. Yeah, 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 that's uh, remarkable. So I'll just, I think I'll try some classes that I'm not familiar with, try to amaze myself at the new animations, the new maps. But I, first thing I'll do is go to a map and press L to see just, what yeah. review the, the we have of the map. That's great. Yeah. So that's, that's gonna be it. I mean, please do tell me in chat what are the first things that you're doing because have you even thought about what you will be doing when the beta releases? What are your first? What are you trying? Are you questing? Are you going straight to a sort of dungeon? Are you gonna theory craft your face and colors for hours on end? How are you going to proceed? For me, there's one litmus test for fluidity, is I'm going to put the game in max graphics. This is obviously after they give us uh, the account, the already existing one, when they poured them. Yeah. Um, I will take my four-man team and then go, uh, I think I will add four sidekicks and go do a vortex in full animation, full graphics, and see how it's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that is just... one, uh, one dungeon that lags a lot right now. If that dungeon is fluid, the whole game is bloody fluid and all right. If that dungeon yeah, has be. problems, uh. One thing that I did recently, <laughs> I was doing the Forge of Lava, so Lava Smith, maybe? Lava Smith, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the office, and then in that, there's a, a specific combat where the whole map is covered by, like, uh, tentacles or something like that. It's oh, below yeah, yeah, water, yeah. underwater. Yeah. I don't know if you did oh, it or, or not. Bethel. And it's in the Bethel area, yeah. Yes. But like that one look at is that. just <laughs> covered by by enemies. Every single cell is it, it has enemies on top of it. Yes. And the goal is to like kill enemies to reach the other side. You only need to reach to the other side of the map. Yeah. Yeah, you have to relog after every turn for that one, so you skip all the animations from everyone else, by the way. This is how it's currently being done. So, um, I've seen on Devs Polino that if you switch your client to 32-bit instead of 64-bit, it stops lagging, and I did it that way. I didn't have to 
log out after every wow. turn. Wow. But... Yes. Wow. And we all learned something first, today. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so you know what? First, I'm gonna add you, that you to the tool you channel. You have to uh, remember that this <laughs> leaks because uh, with Unity it's gonna be smooth. Uh, <laughs> that was also smoothish though. So that was really smooth. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. Awesome. So, so you yeah. went to the Japan Expo for the first time. You have engaged with anything uh, physical activity, a physical event with the office. You've yes. spent four days there. You've conquered it. What can you tell us as your last words as an experience as a whole? And maybe just sell me on going to the next event or anybody that is listening that is sort of hesitant and on the fence. Should I, should I not go? Yeah. What would you tell them? Of course, it's depending on everyone. But for me, I was kind of hesitant to book the four days of the Japan Expo at first. I was like, well, what will there be to, for me to do? Like, what if I'm bored? Uh, I'm not just going to spend my whole time in queue to, to try to beat my score. <laughs> like, four days I was curious with. to discover it. Uh, mm. And I didn't know, like, I asked a couple of my friends to come with me because I think it, this is a much uh, more fun experience if you're with other people. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, no one was available or interested. And uh, so I had the full, whole four days and I was like, eh, maybe I'll I'll be bored after a while. But it was such a nice energy at the Angama stand that I kind of felt like going back home after I was tired from going around <laughs> and seeing all the other stuff. I was just oh. coming, having a chat with this guy about Waven, doing a bit of fight for every stand and talking with Manaya, uh, going to see the <laughs> store. Even That's the people awesome. in the store, they, they gave me like super good recommendation. They were super enthusiastic. Uh, they showed me the, the app that they have. They showed me around like all the, the, the nice stuff that they have. So I thought at first I'm just going to go to the Japan and not go to the convention. But actually, after having such a nice experience and seeing all the staff interact with the community and have such a good energy that I, I right now I'm thinking of going to the convention as well so fantastic thank you very much yeah. you've heard it guys if you're on the fence jump yes <laughs> get on the I other side so, yeah. <laughs> if anything you would later on wish you had more time because of how cool these things tend to be towards the end of them yeah um this is usually when I give all sorts of guests uh, when they come to the podcast, I sort of give them a little platform to advertise what they do, how we can find them on online and things like that. But I know you are not a conventional content creator. And I wanted to say no, thank you a still. Not content creator at all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much still for proposing. This is everybody that is watching this and in the future. This was all Istos's idea. He contacted me. He proposed it. He wanted to be the international pubs correspondent at the Japan Expo so we can have a, pair, a, fa a fresh pair of eyes there to document everything come back and talk to us about it and he didn't come empty-handed he came back with a code that Zach won today so yes just to say thank you again uh would you like to take a minute two five however long you want to tell us about anything you fancy anything you want to promote anything you want to get as excited about any call to action of any kind any collaboration yeah, uh, you're hoping would come up in the future? Anyone you want to contact you on the back of this? Anything you fancied? The floor is yours, Istos. All right. So I'm not actually uh, creating any con sort of content. I'm trying to use the fact that I'm living in France. I'm, I have access to all these events. I'm quite fluent in English, so I, I'm trying to be a bridge between both communities, the French community and the English community. But of course, I don't really see what is sorely needed for the English community because I, I'm playing in French with my French friends. Um, it's hard for me to to notice like, oh, this is sorely missing in the, in the English community. So, and as you mentioned before, I'm a dev. So if you have any project that you're willing to kind of take the lead, but you need a bit of technical expertise. I can be a counsel or actually I can contribute. And uh, other than that, yes, being at the Japan Expo and seeing the, all of the 
energy around Dofus. It kind of gives me, it kind of makes me want to invest more time into doing stuff like that. So I was thinking maybe uh, if there is an interest, I could uh, do some small capsules uh, about the lore of Dofus, Wakfu, and all of these things. I'm very curious and fascinated by like world building complex universes. Yes. So if yes, there is some does. interest towards that, uh, I, I would be interested in coming back to your life, sharing that with people or maybe doing a YouTube. Uh, I think I think some I YouTube know content. who the first person that is going to contact you on the back of this one. I know him very well and it's me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that so is maybe, awesome. Yeah. Also, I enjoyed it quite a lot uh, being here. Uh, with you it was a nice discussion and it's nice to be able to interact a bit with the chat yeah it's, fab uh, it's fabulous isn't it we're starting yeah, to get a little thing going and i'm loving it every day and the things that you've proposed today can only contribute to better the vibe and bring people together and sort of propose novel things other than how to level your professions or things that we all have seen yeah. in multiple languages so yes if we can bring cool things to you guys, we will continue to do that. And trust me when I say that the cadence of things coming your way is only going to increase because next Wednesday is my last day at work. I'm officially fired. <laughs> and for the next Let's six go. months, if not more, I will be coming at you with every ounce of the willingness energy I'm, I'm coming after you there will be content there will be more podcasts there will be more videos there will be more live things in fact i have worked out how i can apply to a french visa i had some technical issues they wouldn't let me apply from the website and i was starting to think do they not want me to come or something <laughs> but i've gotten over the tech hurdles now and i've worked it out and i'm going to apply speedily and hastily to be sure that on the next big event, which is on the 30th of August, until the 1st of September, I am there physically. I have some tech things to work out, like how to stream on the go and things like that, but it is coming. I will be your pair of eyes, uh, the English pair of eyes, on the next Ankama convention. And if you're there, Istos, then maybe we can do something. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to meet uh, face to face. Hell yeah. I'm dragging Eslix with me as well, for sure. And I'll try to get as many of the internationals as possible so we can take a photo that we will all either look back on in the future and cringe or have massive, massive bouts of nostalgia and be like, do you remember that time we did this incredibly cool thing and that was so unique in time? We will make that happen for you guys. Yeah. I, I do not know yet Eslix because I already have a fishing trip booked in Northern Ireland, which is the other side of the world from France, on the 1st of September. But I will work out the details. If I get my visa, if France allows me to enter the French territory and trust me with that, <laughs> then I will be communicate. Then I will rethink everything and maybe I could do the full three days, maybe not. But I will let you know for sure if you stay tuned at the International Pub. Istos? Thank you very much for coming. Any last words for us? Anything that you've wanted to say and I've rudely interrupted you and not let you do that? No, no not at all. Thanks for having me. It was a great experience. I enjoyed yeah. it. And uh, yeah. I was uh, nervous, of course, uh, at the start, but... Uh... Naturally, we got yeah, over it together. Having one sweet. last thing. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, there it is. <laughs> Maya kept pestering me about your Reddit events that you need to organize <laughs> to win your Reddit shield, right? Oh my so, God. It's unavoidable, uh, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Fair enough, fair so enough. You need it to uh, start working on that. It is in the plant. If anyone is ever interested in a Reddit shield, they are quite rare, but I have been given a challenge there will be at a minimum 10 community events coming to you on Reddit and I will be coming at you full force. I've already designed two. I'm working on the third with a handful of people. I'm trying to include as many people in these challenges. So it's not just me throwing things at you. I want it to be collaborative. So more people are involved and it's more fun that way. But there's two already worked out, the full details. A third one in the draft phase. Seven more to go after that one. I don't know how I'm going to get through them. But I know for a fact that I will as long as I'm alive. 
He starts again. Thank you very much for being here. It was superbly fun. I'm still buzzing with energy. And I don't know what to do with the rest of my evening now. <laughs> I need to well, go. Thanks a lot again. And well, see you next time, I guess. Fabulous.